Prince Rhaegar Targaryen was the eldest son and heir of King Aerys II Targaryen, by his sister wife Queen Rhaella Targaryen. For three centuries, the Targaryens had continued to incestuously marry brother to sister to keep the bloodline pure in the tradition of their Valyrian ancestors. Over time, this massive inbreeding led to a strain of insanity appearing in the Targaryen bloodline, culminating in Rhaegar's father, Aerys II, who is best remembered as the Mad King. Aerys II's reign began with great promise, but as the years passed, he slid deeper and deeper into insanity and paranoia. The shift was gradual, and he frequently recovered. By the time it became severe, Prince Rhaegar already showed such great promise as the future heir to the throne that most were willing to endure with Aerys's eccentricities, intending to wait out the remainder of his reign until Rhaegar succeeded him. Rhaegar was brave, kind, and wise, and most looked forward to the golden era that would assuredly begin when he would ascend to the throne. Greatly troubled by Aerys II's growing insanity, Rhaegar was torn between whether to act against him or not, but could not bring himself to turn against his own father. Like the rest of the realm, Rhaegar hoped to simply wait out the rest of his father's reign, and that his bouts of insanity would remain manageable by his courtiers. Rhaegar had good reason to think that the small council could keep the realm together despite his father's madness, as it was very capably led by Tywin Lannister, who served as Aerys's hand for nearly twenty years. Tywin was not only able to keep Aerys from tearing the realm apart, but managed royal affairs so well that he brought two decades of peace and plenty for Westeros, to the point that most people throughout the realm were unaware of the king's madness until the final years of his reign. Because Aerys and Rhaella had produced no daughters for Rhaegar to wed, he had to look outside the family for a bride. Many assumed that in reward for Tywin's long and distinguished service as Aerys's chief advisor, the bond between the Targaryens and Lannisters would eventually be solidified with a marriage alliance between Prince Rhaegar and Tywin's daughter Cersei, particularly, Cersei herself, who for a time was quite infatuated with Rhaegar. Yet Aerys surprisingly spurned the match, saying that Tywin was still just a servant and shouldn't try to elevate his family above its station, as such a match was beneath Rhaegar. It was later believed that Aerys did this in a fit of paranoia that Tywin was trying to usurp his throne. Despite everything Tywin had done for him in two decades of loyal service, Aerys had grown so resentful and fearful that many people throughout the realm whispered, accurately, that Tywin was the real power behind the throne by that point. Alienating his longtime hand, Aerys instead agreed to an arranged marriage between Rhaegar and Aelia Martell, a princess from Dawn, daughter of the ruling princess of Dawn, who was a distant cousin of the royal line through intermarriage a century before. Rhaegar and Aelia's marriage was happy according to all accounts. Oberon Martell, Aelia's younger brother, said that his sister loved her husband. Rhaegar and Aelia had two children, a daughter named Rhinus, and then a son named Aegon. A few years later, the great tourney at Harrenhal was held and all the prominent lords of Westeros assembled. During the feast, Rhaegar played a song on his harp so beautiful and sorrowful that it moved even the wild she-wolf Lyanna Stark to tears. The exact events that happened in private are unknown, but the public events at the tourney's final joust are known to all. Rhaegar faced off against Sir Barristan Selmy in the final tilt, and won. Instead of then giving the victor's wreath to his own wife Aelia Martell, however, the entire crowd of hundreds of people fell silent as he rode past her and gave it to Lyanna Stark, to name her as the tournament's queen of love and beauty, an act that was doubly controversial as Lyanna was herself already betrothed to Robert Baratheon. At the same tourney, King Aerys announced that he was naming young Jaime Lannister to the Kingsguard. While he was a very skilled swordsman, Aerys really appointed Jaime to the order to rob Tywin of his eldest son and heir, as the Kingsguard forswear all right to inheritance, and treat him as a glorified political hostage at the royal court, should Tywin ever turn against him. Tywin was infuriated, as he had been grooming Jaime for years to succeed him as ruler of the Westerlands, and by law, Jaime's removal meant that the first in line to inherit Casterly Rock would be Tywin's hated dwarf son Tyrion. Tywin promptly resigned as Hand of the King, and withdrew from King's Landing back to Casterly Rock. About a year after the tourney, under as yet unknown circumstances, Rhaegar allegedly abducted Lyanna Stark. Unknown to all, Lyanna had actually desired to leave with Rhaegar, and they ran off together to the Red Mountains of Dawn. They stayed at a relatively small castle Rhaegar named the Tower of Joy. Rhaegar arranged for the High Septon to grant him an annulment from his marriage to Aelia Martell, then personally officiate his secret marriage to Lyanna the same day. 
Lyanna's eldest brother Brandon then rode to King's Landing to demand the return of his sister and the death of Rhaegar, a rash thing to do according to others. King Ares imprisoned him, and when their father Rickard went south to ransom his son, he was imprisoned as well. The Mad King then brutally executed both of them by burning Lord Rickard alive with wildfire in front of the Iron Throne and baiting Brandon into strangling himself to death in an effort to save his father. Afterwards, King Ares demanded that John Arryn send him the heads of Eddard Stark and Robert Baratheon. John Arryn refused, and instead, raised his banners in revolt. Eddard Stark and Lyanna's betrothed, Robert Baratheon, joined him to overthrow the Targaryen dynasty. This war became known as Robert's Rebellion, or the War of the Usurper, to Targaryen loyalists. To the confusion of many, Rhaegar's location remained unknown during most of the war, which lasted about a year, as Robert Baratheon's rebel army fought its way up from Storm's End through the Reach in the Riverlands, and then up to the Trident, Rhaegar was nowhere to be seen. For months, it seems he stayed in seclusion with Lyanna at the Tower of Joy in Dawn. During this early phase of the rebellion, Ares too continued to think of Robert Baratheon as just an outlaw lord, but after he defeated all of the local royal armies thrown at him and crossed north of the Trident, Ares finally realized that this was the worst revolt the Targaryens had faced in over a century. Around the same time, Rhaegar suddenly returned to the royal court at King's Landing to lead the crown's armies. Both sides now mobilized the full might of their forces. Robert led his rebel army south, composed of Baratheon, Stark, Tully, and Arryn forces while Rhaegar led the royal army north to meet him, composed of the Targaryen armies raised from the crownlands, supplemented by another 10,000 from Dawn. Accompanying Rhaegar were two of the Kingsguard, Barristan Selmy and Lewin Martell, uncle of Rhaegar's wife Aelia. On the way, Rhaegar privately confided to Barristan that after they won, there would be many changes at the royal court upon his return, alluding that he intended to depose his father for his crimes and instability and try to restore peace with the great houses of the realm. Rhaegar and Robert's forces finally clashed at the climactic battle of the Trident, at the crossing of the King's Road over the river, not far from the inn at the crossroads. Rhaegar's army was fresh and slightly larger, but Robert's was more battle-hardened, and they slowly gained ground. Rhaegar and Robert spotted each other across the battlefield and rode out to fight, resulting in an epic duel which raged for hours as the battle dragged on around them. Robert killed Rhaegar with a mighty blow from his warhammer, which caved in Rhaegar's breastplate. His armor had been studded with red rubies, which were sent flying through the ford in the river. It has been known as the Ruby Ford since. Their leader killed, the Targaryen army collapsed, and the rebels were victorious. With Rhaegar's death, the Targaryen cause was doomed. Most of their supporters had been fighting for Rhaegar, not the Mad King, so after he died, most either surrendered or switched sides not to mention that the main Targaryen army had been destroyed at the Trident. The rebel army continued unopposed south to King's Landing, but Tywin Lannister's army arrived there first. Tywin had kept the Lannisters neutral throughout most of the war, and only made the calculated decision to side with the rebels after it became obvious they would win, to curry favor with Robert and his allies after the war ended. Tywin feigned that he had brought his army to help Ares in his time of greatest need, but as soon as they were let inside the gates of King's Landing, the Lannister army promptly began to brutally sack the entire city. Rhaegar's father the Mad King was himself killed by his own Kingsguard, Tywin's son Jaime Lannister, to stop him from enacting the wildfire plot to burn down the city. Meanwhile, Lannister soldiers gained entry into the Red Keep. Sir Gregor Clegane, known as, the Mountain That Rides, cornered Rhaegar's wife Aelia and her two small children in the royal apartments. Gregor killed Rhinus and baby Aegon while their mother Aelia watched helplessly, then raped Aelia, before killing her too. Shortly before the sack, Rhaegar's heavily pregnant mother Queen Rhaella had been sent to safety on Dragonstone Island, along with his younger brother Viserys. Not long after they arrived, however, Rhaella died giving birth to Rhaegar's posthumous younger sister, Daenerys Targaryen. Viserys and his newborn sister then fled into exile in the Free Cities, across the Narrow Sea, before Robert's soldiers could arrive on the island. Lyanna Stark did not survive much longer than Rhaegar. After arriving at King's Landing in the aftermath of the sack, her brother Eddard rode south with his companions searching for her, before finding her at the Tower of Joy in the western mountains of Dawn, protected by the last of the Targaryen Kingsguard, the legendary Sir Arthur Dane and Sir Gerald Hightower, who had secretly been ordered by Rhaegar himself to keep her, and her unborn child, safe. 
Eddard and his companions fought them in an epic confrontation, at the end of which all were dead except for himself and the wounded Howland Reed. Eddard raced inside only to find that Lyanna was dying from childbirth, after having given birth to her son, Rhaegar's last child and heir. With her last breath, Lyanna told Eddard of her secret marriage to Rhaegar, and that their son's name was, Aegon Targaryen. Lyanna made Eddard promise to keep him safe, because if Robert ever found out that Rhaegar had a surviving heir, he would kill him, not least of which because, as Rhaegar's lawful son, he was the real legitimate heir to the Iron Throne, ahead of Rhaegar's younger siblings. To protect his sister's son, Eddard departed with Rhaegar and Lyanna's newborn child and took him back to Winterfell. Eddard claims his nephew as his bastard son fathered while he was on campaign to keep the child safe. He names the child, Jon Snow, and raises him in Winterfell.